today on Florida Sportsman. Project Dreamboat. Dave at Rocky Point Boatworks takes on refreshing and updating a classic Mako, aiming for quick flip profits. So while we're heading over to look at the boat, we're really hoping that we're gonna get a deal and uh, you never know, and uh, I think we found it. FS Boating Editor George Labonte joins Brad Reddington aboard his classic 17-foot Mako. The uh, personal connection with this boat, the personal pride that we all put into it, uh, I don't think could ever be replaced. And at TRB, Dale and his wife visit Birds All Marine to discuss console and top options for their Stamus overhaul. I mean, to be honest, it exceeded my expectations. I was blown away. We walked out of there with more than I expected. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Hey everybody, Dave with Rocky Point Boat Works here. Today we're working on a 1985 Mako that we purchased as a quick flip. We went out and inspected the boat and uh, immediately I saw some items on there that I liked. Yamaha engine, Armstrong bracket, major plus. We're trying to keep it a bottom line of a real low amount and um, we're not trying to go overboard. But if you're buying a boat to make it into your dream boat, we're gonna show you what you're looking for so that it doesn't throw you out of budget. You don't want any surprises, bad transom, soft floor, bad fuel tank, and all those kind of things. So I'm gonna walk you through some items and try to hopefully find those hidden things that normally get you in the builds. All right, this is the Yamaha engine, awesome. One key thing you're gonna to wanna to do because this is probably one of the largest portions of the boat that financially will ruin you or sink you and could affect the overall price of you purchasing the boat. Remove the cowling, inspect certain things, make sure it wasn't sunk, you know, sunk or any, you know, those kind of things. Obviously, always do compression and when you're doing that, you're gonna inspect the spark plugs and that'll tell you how that motor's been running unless somebody swapped out some the plugs and put new ones in, it makes it a little difficult. Other things you're going to look for is your trim, your trim unit, make sure it's not leaking because those are more costs that are going to add up. So if you are doing a, a, a flip, you, uh, you got to add all this in. Um, obviously we got the gear case off this right now, but you're going to want to pull the drain plug, the bottom plug, make sure there's no water in the gear case because in this case, this boat's been sitting for over seven years and a good used gear case is $1,500, $1,800. So again, keep that in mind. As of right now, we're going to run with this motor. Um, we had it running, it's a real good running motor, so we're gonna keep this and see what other stuff we may find on the boat. Then it'll help us make our decision and saying, hey, we gotta keep that motor on there. All right, another thing we just noticed when we did roll up on the boat is it's already got an Armstrong bracket. So that is awesome. I mean, these brackets can run up in the five, $6,000 range, plus you have to pay somebody to put it on or you a long weekend doing it. It's already on, so cha-ching. We got great value now when people see that and it's gonna save us some money. And I really dig in what's going on here. He kind of left an open platform here so you can step in and out. We're gonna clean it up and do some other stuff. Um, maybe move some rigging around and uh, trick it out just a little bit. And the more and more I keep looking at this boat, I am just, I'm probably gonna keep it, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> so uh, back here in the transom, um, we're looking where the bracket meets the transom. We're looking for heavy cracking. Um, I like the fact that I see a lot of, lot of sealant everywhere. So whoever did this install obviously did a really good job and that's not, not gonna allow water to get in to potentially rot out our transom. Um, we're looking for heavy corrosion along any aluminum. I'm not seeing that, I'm not seeing it lift. I'm not seeing um, big gaps. So that would indicate the transom may be separating and that's just for a general look out here. We've already looked underneath and we're looking at some items down there and so far I'm liking what I'm seeing. So. We're just gonna move on into the inside and we're gonna look for some other items in there. Obviously more cracking, but um, we'll do some simple knock tests, be able to tell if it's hollow or whatnot. Like I said, it's just giving you a general idea of what you need to be looking for. When we come back, George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Brad Reddington aboard his classic 17-foot Mako in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by 
Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. At Two Rivers Boatworks, we turn dreams into reality, one boat at a time. Specializing in the installation of the industry's leading audio, electronics, and LED lighting systems, to the custom design and fabrication of dash panels, foam decking, upholstery, and more. Our experienced technicians are certified to service Mercury, Yamaha, and Suzuki outboards. New Boat Envy? Our line of custom performance skiffs can be tailored to meet your unique boating needs. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Some of the motivations we've seen for undertaking a restoration project on Dreamboat would include Sentimental value. Another situation is where you see people that are buying a boat just for pure functionality, a boat that suits their particular needs. The boat we'll look at today is a combination of those two factors, where the father passes the boat down to the son who grew up fishing on the boat, and the son already knew the boat suited his needs and wanted to breathe a little bit of life into it. Today we join Brad Reddington in Stewart, Florida to have a look at his 17 Mako project. All right, my name is Brad Reddington. Um, I've been born and raised here in Stewart, Florida. Um, in 2002, my father purchased this boat and was born and raised on it. Um, he owns, uh, was building fishing rods his whole life and I currently work for him building fishing rods locally here out of the Stewart, Florida, out of our house. So the boat was always my dad's boat um, until I was about 15. We used and abused the boat so it got neglected towards the end and actually my dad being in the fishing industry his whole life um, kind of got booted out of fishing a little bit and uh, so the boat kind of got neglected for two years. So once I turned 15, 16 and old enough to actually have some responsibility, my dad handed over the title and um, I was saving up for a little bit and he actually helped me out a little bit too, he funded for the motor and stuff. Um, but he said as long as you put in the time, you can have the boat and signed it over to me. Once Brad secured ownership of the boat from his dad, it was time to round up his friends and begin the project. So then it was just uh, me and a couple of my friends, Stephen and Owen Kenny. He helped with the painting, the sanding, the overlooking the whole project pretty much because I had an ambition, but I really didn't have the skills to restore everything. So as long as he said, if you don't give up on me, I'll show you and help you through every which process. We started stripping everything off and it was a lot more than we thought. Um, There's a lot of spider cracks everywhere, which we had to dremel out, fill with Bondo and putty and special putty and then come through and sand out. And then other than that, we did a whole new paint. We sprayed all grip and then we rolled the all craft, which is the blue. Um, we had to pull the console out um, underneath the console was all rotted and stuff. We had to replace all the foam around the fuel tank as well. And then we had to put a whole new fiberglass floor in the bottom with Kusa board. And then we took two by fours and went down, a marine two by fours, and went down the sides and then laid glass over everything and filled it all in. Although this wasn't a hull up restoration, Brad was definitely going to make some modifications that would improve his own personal boating and fishing experiences. Also had a custom leaning post made for the boat. Um, the Makos are pretty, pretty wide as is, but they do have a really wide console on them. So with the console being so wide, I wanted a leaning post that was a little bit smaller to give us more deck room in the back when we're fishing. So we actually took the original leaning post, cut it in half. Um, I have a welder friend and he uh, refabricated it back together, had some custom cushions made. We have two rod holders down the middle that go underneath the backrest and I can actually take the backrest out and have four rod holders back there for when we're hard fishing offshore, need the extra rod storage. Um, as is right now, I think there's anywhere from 14 to 15 rod holders on the boat. So you don't really need more than 15 rods on a 17 foot boat. Uh, we have custom rod racks that underneath each side of the gunnel. And then other than that, new motor, or somewhat newer motor, and new speakers, new wiring, new Garmin. Um, did some little C-deck touches, little C-deck ruler on the bottom here. Just little versatile things that we use and the custom things that um, just make life a lot easier. And of course with the Yamaha going back to not burning any gas really, the reliability of and the fuel efficiency of this motor. I can go into the inlet and stuff on two or three gallons. I can go out snook fishing on three to four gallons. Put 2,000 hours on the boat in three years and I run actually 87 octane through it. 
Um, I don't have to run the Rec 90 because of how often I run the boat. It actually doesn't even skip a beat. I haven't had it skip a beat. Um, yeah, just the all around reliability of the motor. It's besides oil changes, a timing belt, and spark plugs, that's about all I've done. It's uh, been nothing but reliable for me though. After talking with him, I could see the 17 Mako was gonna be a perfect fit for Brad. Whether it was just enjoying some fishing on the water with his friends or doing some R&D for his rod company in Stewart, the 17 Mako was surely gonna bring him the satisfaction that he was looking for when he undertook the build. As of right now, I don't see this boat going anywhere. Uh, I've put too much time into it, me and my friends have put way too much time into it. It's kind of like a memory now, but the uh, personal connection with this boat, the personal pride that we all put into it, uh, I don't think could ever be replaced. After receiving the boat as a gift and performing various repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Brad's dream boat comes to a total of $12,500. When we return, Dave at Rocky Point Boat Works continues the inspection of his newly purchased classic Mako. This segment brought to you by Pacer Group, marine grade electrical wire, components and systems. For more than 30 years, Pacer Group has been the most trusted provider of wire, cable, and electrical products to the top marine manufacturers. All of our wire and cable is made in the USA to ensure it's the best in the industry. Pacer Group provides the highest quality electrical products to be found at one place. You can order with us at pacergroup.net. Shop online and ship or pick up your web order within an hour at our Hollywood, Florida location. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dave Singer of Rocky Point Boatworks uses their latest shop purchase, a worn down Mako, to show what to look for when buying your own Project Dreamboat. Okay, so keeping the theme with the transom inspection, we're looking along here. This would be a normal, another point of uh, stress. These are little tiny cracks. We're not concerned about that. They're not big. I'm looking at my washers, my mounting washers for the bracket. They're not sucking in. Um, that's one thing you'll look for. That's very solid, okay? You can tell when you hit it, it's very dense. If you hit something or you get that hollow sound, it's cause for concern. So we're gonna want to inspect the rest of the stuff down below. And uh, I might have to pause a second. I have a very strong fuel odor down here. This boat's been sitting a while, um, and this is something you gotta take in consideration when you're purchasing an older vessel. Um, fuel tanks are always your number one call, especially a boat like this, if you're flipping it, the number one uh, answer, you know, question I get is, when was the fuel tank done? So that being said, I, I got my fuel odor. Here's another telltale sign. If you're looking in here, we got water. So we probably have a compromised fuel tank. I'm inspecting my, uh, my other bolts where the bracket was mounted. We got a little corrosion, which is to be expected, but nothing to be concerned. And I, I don't see any other cracks down in here. And uh, it, it just really sounds, it, it sounds good. So I'm pretty confident we got a good transom. I'm not, I'm not stressing that. You always want to pop all your hatches, move your bins. You can come in here and you can look. Uh, got a real clear view, any structural issues. Again, with the transom meeting the side of the boat, that's looking really good. I don't see any cracks, delamination, anything like that, especially with the age of this vessel. You know, those are things you would typically see. I'm not seeing in this boat, so I'm, I'm getting excited uh, as far as for my flip. Again, probably gonna end up keeping it. <laughs> but uh, we're good. I think uh, we'll move on to the next thing. Moving forward, you're gonna obviously see there's some access holes here, inspection plates um, to get to your fuel uh, tank. We pulled that out and not liking what we're seeing, so it does confirm after we did smell our fuel, the tank's in rough shape. However, you can clearly see that this, this floor here, we're blessed, it unscrews. We'll be able to remove it and uh, be able to hopefully get the tank out. If you guys ever pull the tank out of some of these, they get uh, a little tricky. Even though the floor is nice and easy to come out, they foam these things in real good. So while you're up here walking around, always, you know, use your weight, push on the floor. I like to look in areas where anywhere anybody put a screw through, because not everybody uses sealant, and that's a great place for water to get in and rot the wood. But um, I like what I see. Um, it was really good. Another thing I like to look at is your metal work. We all know 
Th this stuff is an art to do anyway, and um, it could get really pricey. So overall, looking at it, it's not heavily corroded. It's very, very dirty, but I'm looking, I'm making sure I don't have any cracks. It doesn't look like anybody's been modifying it over the years, so it looks real good. We obviously need new canvas. We're gonna be doing that. We'll, we'll probably end up throwing some new taco uh, spreader lights on it. Um, taco makes a really nice overhead light, LED, so put that up there and update the boat there. Everybody loves LED. Got a bird's all leaning post in super good condition. We'll clean that up again. May or may not paint it. We don't know yet, but we'll reupholster it. It's going to be looking good. Another thing you want to do is get your head up inside the console and, and see what kind of wiring you got. And I tell you, doing this, I find some really interesting things. This isn't bad. It is old. And being that there's not many systems, we're just going to rewire the boat and put all new switches, fuse panels, and update everything. And uh, this way, whoever gets the boat, um, has no issues while we're out on the water. So while we're heading over to look at the boat, we're really hoping that we're going to get a deal and because uh, you never know and uh, I think we found it. Pretty excited. I cannot wait to start working on this thing. Getting tired of seeing it sit in the yard, not touching it. So really stoked. Can't wait to start. When we return at TRB, Dale and his wife visit Birds All Marine to discuss top and console options for their Stamus Dreamboat project. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dale and his wife visit Birds All Marine in hopes of designing the perfect console and top for their Stamus 290 tarpon. So over at Two Rivers Boat Works, um, we have the Stamus 290 tarpon project on the go. And perhaps one of the biggest decisions to be made mm -hmm. with a boat is to do the center console, the leaning post, and the T-top. We've decided to go with Birdsall Marine to do okay. our T-top. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited to go down and meet with Bobby and, and see what they can do for us. Yeah, I can't wait to see what he's going to show us. Yeah, me too. The big thing we want to go and look at is that Bobby has a whole lot of different like T-tops, like he has the Key West. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get a large one? Mm -hmm. Are we going to get a medium? Like Bobby says, that the large one will probably do be a lot better for us for our for our needs mm -hmm. because um, you know we're going to be using the boat for diving, not so much just a fishing boat. Right. And then it's just also choosing the console because he has a whole lot of options available mm -hmm. with the console. Bobby said he also has some options available for um, a leaning post. Okay. It'd be really cool if we could put a grill there or something like that. Oh, just, okay. Just, Your idea. I'm just putting it out there. Okay, yeah. okay. Catch the fish, grill them up, spear fish them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Once we arrived at Birdsall Marine and we spent a few minutes talking to Bobby and so on, Bobby brought to our attention that he has designed a T-top center console and leaning post for his new boat, the Birdsall 30. Mm -hmm. And he kind of felt that our boat would be the perfect project boat to use the same console, T-top, and leaning post that he has on his boat. Guys, this is, um, this is our large hardtop. Uh, uh, one of the gentlemen here that does the drafting mm -hmm. and design work has drawn this uh, for our particular boat. Oh, okay. Like we mentioned, this this top would be perfect for your boat. Mm -hmm. And this unit that we're, we're in the process of building now gives you the back-to-back -back seating, which for diving would be pretty mm -hmm. cool, actually, because mm -hmm. you can almost set up. Yeah, back um, there, yeah. And it mirror images this console. It's not, it's only 42 inches wide. Okay. And um, this is what we've drawn for our boat, and I'm just really in love with it, actually. Yeah. I love the clean lines. Yes. Nice and clean. Of the T-top, yeah. I don't know about you, but once I looked at them, it was like, I could imme immediately see that on our boat. 
and then Bobby took it one step further, you know, right. he took us out onto the, the workshop floor and showed us exactly what the T-top would look like, what the aluminum structure would look like. It was really nice to be able to physically see what we're going to have on our boat. This hard top is 82 inches wide by 132 inches long. And like we mentioned, it's a tad too long, but if we do pull it back and tie it into the leaning post, right. it, it makes it really a lot work well, stability-wise and sun coverage-wise. I think this will work well for that boat. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Uh, I think so, too, uh, yes. We'll head back and see if uh, Rick's, uh, what, he, what he's doing, and we'll look on the computer, all right? Okay, okay that sure. sounds great, All right, great. I was concerned because I wanted shade. The hard top wasn't going to be big enough, and once I saw it on the floor, I knew that it was going to be plenty big enough. And the other thing that I noticed is the flawless execution of the fiberglass and the finish work. Yeah. Well, also the welds on, on the <laughs> aluminum work. Yeah. Well, you, you know You're me and welder. Weld, you know me and welding. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. ooh, it's so pretty. You know? <laughs> so this is a new unit that we spoke about that um, we're making for the, the boat that we're building. And um, it, it mimics the console as far as mm -hmm. width, about 42 inches wide. Um, in the back there where you see the blue, is that's going to be a, have a, a hatch lid on it, obviously. That'll be a built-in cooler. You can have a little bit of tackle storage back here. This will be a cushion area, obviously a cushion area. And then your leaning post cushion. But this would, this would give you possibly an area that you can get ready to dive. Your people that are with you, you know, can sit comfortably. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Rick's and, and, and mine rendition of the next Birds All 30. That's, you know, like I said, it's going to belong to Birds All Marine. So uh, we're, we're digging what we have here. Well, yeah. I, I think that's brilliant. Well, you know, the way you've designed it with the seating and everything, yeah. I just really love it. Like, yes. I just love it. I mean, to be honest, it exceeded my expectations. I was blown away. Well, I mean, I, I went there with a vague idea in mind of what I wanted, some real strong opinions about some of the things I wanted, you know, yeah, when yeah. we talked about it, yeah, but yeah. we walked out of there with more than I expected. I'm, I'm really happy with what Bobby came up with for us, yeah. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. At Two Rivers, the Donzi 38 received some very custom upgrades from top to bottom. The Bertram 25 restoration completed at Wildfire Marine put to work on the Thousand Islands in New York. George Labonte joins Barney Stotts on his beautifully restored 27 Rambo. And the crew at TRB unveils the refreshed 38 Donzi to its owner.